A protest in Birmingham, organised by Shaquille Afsar, a vocal activist. But will his views and actions fall foul of the new definition of extremism? This is only being passed to uh, silence us and to put a zip on our mouth and say what you are saying is not acceptable, it won't be entertained, and that's wrong. This is, not, this is not the democratic country that I grew up in. You could take a walk down the streets in many areas and every single thing that we have said and done is agreed by many, many thousands of British citizens. He made headlines five years ago when a protest exclusion zone was set up around a Birmingham primary school after Shaquille led a campaign against inclusion of LGBT literature. He's re-emerged organising pro-Palestinian marches. Rishi Sunak, you are most definitely a waste man. Shaquille says he doesn't support what Hamas did on October the 7th, but his views and actions might still be considered extremist. And this chant, for example, anti-Semitic. Surely, do the Palestinians not have a right to arm themselves and stop this tyranny and this genocide that is happening? A lot of people say, the, the when you chant from the river to the sea, you're saying, stop that genocide over there, but let's annihilate another population over I, here. I, I believe that the Palestinians and the Palestinian res resistance movement has a right to defend themselves... But does that mean...? ..and arm themselves to defend themselves as per international law. Up to what? Up to which geographical location? Well, up to up, up to, to the, between the river and the sea. Up to between the river and the sea. So therefore, where do the and, Israelis and, live? Where and do the Israelis I all, live? I all, that, that's the main I'm going to answer the question. Okay. Where the Israelis live is from the river to the sea in a democratic country where they all live peacefully. Michael Gove says pro-Palestinian events have been organised by extremist groups, and it will be one of the challenges of this definition to decide who falls under it. This definition does not ban extremism. What it bans is the government giving money or platforms to extremists. I think that's very important to make that distinction. You can still have freedom of thought on this basis, but I think what's quite clear is that we don't want extremist groups to be empowered by government. We want them as far away in the margins of life as possible. Abdullah represents one group which fears it will be deemed extremist, called MEND. They oppose the government's anti-radicalisation programme and accuse them of Islamophobia. They also help train institutions about Islamophobia. Uh, people with it, who engage with the Muslim community, whether it be in hospitals or the police or any other uh, organisations, universities, things like this, they reach out to us saying, listen, you have some really good material, we'd like you to kind of train our staff with, you know, to talk to us about these issues. Do you think you'll still be allowed to train the police or medical staff in Islamophobia if you're deemed to be extremist? I think it's, it's an old tactic, really, that if someone is against you, then you just put this label on them and then you don't have to engage with them. The government says it's trying to identify all forms of extremism, including the far right. But Muslim groups fear this will disproportionately affect them.